Well, hello, and welcome to Thrive Groups. So glad to have you here. I'm actually out here on the Connecticut River right now. Um, and I uh, figured to do, uh, do our group out here. Hope you guys are having a great week. We're in our series called Jacked Up. And this week, we were talking about Samson. And man, he was a jacked up character. Before we get going too far, though, I want to go over our ground rules. First is that we want to encourage everyone to participate and no one to dominate. So share your thoughts, your questions, your ideas, but make sure you give other people opportunity to do the same. Also, we start on time, we end on time. So uh, once the group is over, hang out for a few minutes if you'd like to, but let's stay respectful of the location. So we're going to jump right in. And our first question that we're going to open up with is what summer activities do you enjoy? I'll go first. <laughs> I love being on the water. I've said this before, I love boating, love being on the water. That's where I am uh, today, doing out here doing a little bit of studying, doing a little praying and just having a great time out here. But, uh, but how about you? What's some summer activities that you enjoy doing? Okay, so we're going to read some verses here. These are from Judges 16, 23 through 31. So I'll read it, and then uh, and then we'll take time to, to talk about it, discuss it. So the Philistine rulers had a great festival, offering sacrifices and praising their god, Dagon. They said, our god has given us victory over our enemy, Samson. When the people saw him, they praised their god, saying, our god has delivered our enemy to us. The one who killed so many of us is now in our power. Half drunk by now. The people demanded, bring out Samson so he can amuse us. So he was brought from prison to amuse them. And they had him stand between the pillars of the supporting roof. Samson said of the young servant who was leading him by the hand, place my hands against the pillars that hold up the temple, supporting the roof. Hold up the temple. I want to rest against them. Now the temple was completely filled with people. All the Philistine rulers were there. And there was about 3,000 men and women on the roof who were watching as Samson amused them. Then Samson prayed to the Lord, Sovereign Lord, remember me again. Oh God, please strengthen me just one more time. With one blow, let me pay back the Philistines for the loss of my two eyes. Then Samson put his hands on the two pillars that held up the temple, pushing against them with both hands. He prayed, let me die with the Philistines. And the temple crashed down on the Philistine rulers and all the people. So he killed more people when he died than he had in his entire lifetime. Later, his brothers and other relatives went down to get his body. They took him back home and buried him between Zorah and Eshtetol, where his father Manoah was buried. Samson had judged Israel for 20 years. So a lot there. Let's take a few moments and discuss what stood out to us. Okay, next question is tell about a time when God called you to do something, when God called you to do something. You know, oftentimes uh, I'll be in situations where um, I'll be talking to somebody and God calls me to, uh, to to pray for them or something like that. You know, not too long ago, uh, I was at a, a, a car shop getting some work done on my car and I was talking to the lady there and she just seemed like she needed some prayer. And I felt like the Lord saying, hey, I want you to go and pray for her. So I offered to pray for her right then and there. And she had a tear in her eye and she thanked me for doing that. But God uh, showed me to do that. Other things for me, you know, God has shown me, you know, when uh, when we started Thrive uh, to do that. And so that was something that, that God also showed me to do, called me to do. But how about you? What's something that God has called you to do? Next question is share about a time that God used you. Share about a time that God used you. You know, maybe it was uh, talking to somebody, praying for somebody, helping someone in need. You know, sometimes it's uh, it's just offering an encouraging word. Um, I, I believe every week that when I when I get up and I and I preach and things like that, that God uses me. But but there's other times too. You know, when I'm having conversations with people and people who are going through loss, going through hard times and difficulties, God uses me uh, in those situations. But but how about you? Like what what is a time maybe recently that God used you to do something? Next question is, what area do you need more strength in? What area do you need more strength in? You know, uh, there's there's lots of areas in our life that we could probably use strength in. And, uh, and for me, you know, I think it's just the, uh, the, the confidence that when, when God shows me to do something that I actually step out and do it. Sometimes I got to really think about it and pray about it. And I, and I sometimes overanalyze some of these things so I could use some more of God's strength in, in those areas. But maybe it's in finances, maybe it's in relationships, Maybe it's with lust, envy, greed. Uh, what, what are some areas that you could use some more of God's strength in? 
Well, hey, thanks again for joining us for our Thrive Group out here on the lovely Connecticut River. Um, and uh, before we go, we're going to take a few moments and, and pray together. I believe there's power when we pray together, pray for each other. So I would like to give everybody an opportunity to say a few words of prayer. And then when you're done, you can just say amen. The next person will go. Then the leader will ultimately close up. So again, thank you so much for joining us this week for Thrive Groups. Let's close in prayer.